Yep, we totally fell for it. You are the cause of your own demise if you walk into any kind of feed store, co-op store in spring. You might just walk out with one or twelve chickens. So if you guys already have chickens and you already know what you're getting into if you decide to walk into a feed store in the springtime. But this is for people who have never had a chicken before. Maybe you guys have uh, never even been around chickens before. Kind of like us. Before 2016, we've never even been around chickens. And here we are with quite a handful and more on the way. So I'm going to answer some questions that might be going through your head if you are considering getting chickens. Like, do they smell? And are they dirty? And how much time do they take? And should you get them? And how many? And what kind of breed should you get? That's what we're going to answer today. All right, so another question that a lot of potential chicken owners ask is, do chickens smell? Don't they stink? Well, nope. Uh, actually, I have Quasi here with me today. This is Quasimodo. She has a, a defect in her neck, which is why her neck's bent like this, um, probably from a break earlier on. But uh, chickens do not smell. They actually have, well, they do, they do have a, an odor to them, but it's not like a stinky odor. It's kind of like an earthy chickeny smell. I can't explain it. It's a pleasant odor. I mean, I, I like smelling my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I like sniffing my chickens. They really do. They have a really nice smell. What stinks is their poop, just like every creature out there. Um, so if you were to say the humans stink, well, if they don't bathe and if you don't clean the bathrooms, then yeah, they stink. So if you want to have clean chickens, just clean the coop and you'll have clean chickens. The second question is, are chickens noisy? They can be, even the hens. Just because you don't keep a rooster and they're not crowing does not mean that they're quiet. They can be quite loud. Right now they're just making talking noises to me. Uh, but they can get very verbal after laying an egg. They make the egg cluck. Uh, if, they're, if they're hungry, especially Temmie here, she'll start doing like this laughing cackle. But right now they're just... These are normal hen noises, this little screechy thing. Now some of them are a lot more quiet, like Quasi hardly makes any noise. Annie around here, she's black and white. She makes this like squeaking wheel noise. It really, it doesn't depend on the breed. It's, it's more the chicken in and of itself. So they can be noisy. <laughs> so another question that I get asked a lot is, aren't chickens dirty? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, Technically, according to the chicken world, they're very, very clean because chickens take what is called a dust bath. They'll just roll around in some dust. This is one of their favorite dusting areas. You can see the little spots where they'll roll around and shove all the dirt up into their wings. That keeps uh, bugs off, any kind of lice or mites or anything like that. It keeps them nice and clean. But as from a human's perspective, I mean, they're covered in dirt, so that makes them dirty. But as I answered earlier, they don't smell, but they're kind of clean. now. Chickens will step in chicken poop and they'll get poop on their feet, but you know, that's just part of raising chickens. So if that bothers you, that might not be a thing you want to get into, but it doesn't bother us. So another question is how much time do chickens take? Do they take a lot of time? No, uh, actually it really depends on your setup to be perfectly honest. Um, but as far as everyday maintenance with chickens, uh, it probably takes me, I would say a total of 15 minutes total a day to take care of chickens. You gotta, you gotta let them out in the morning and give them feed. You gotta give them feed in the afternoon and collect their eggs and you gotta put them to bed at night. That takes about 15 minutes. Um, overall, you do have to keep their coop clean. Depending on what your coop situation is, if you have a stationary coop, it might take a long time to clean that out and put back down fresh hay as opposed to a coop like we have here, which is a mobile coop, which is all we have to do is take it and drag it and then move the fence. And I'd say at most, you know, that takes probably about 20 minutes. So te technically chickens really don't take a whole lot of time. <laughs> so another question that I get asked a lot is what do you feed them and how much do you feed them? And really this just depends on your personal preference and uh, whether or not you free range or not. 
The feed that I get is from a local feed store called, uh, or feed farm called Barrier Farms. They're out of Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. It is quite a hike for us to go get their feed, but uh, it is very reasonably priced. Uh, I think it's about, uh, I want to say it's about $16 for a 50 pound bag of layer feed. Um, actually, it might be $13. I'm not sure. I have to check their prices. But uh, and I, this is their grower feed for intermediate chickens. And this is, I think, about $16. A little bit more because there's more protein in it. But this is all ground fresh. This is what I feed my chickens, non-GMO chicken feed. And as far as how much do I feed them, uh, it really depends on the time of year. In the wintertime, they do not... <laughs> in the wintertime... She's gonna go right in there. In the winter time, they don't have a lot of bugs when they free range, so I tend to supplement all of their feed. They get probably about, <laughs> they're gonna be naughty. They probably get about, uh, probably about a third of a cup per chicken in the winter time, and then I wean them down to very, very little in the summertime. Pretty much everything is, uh, they can find everything around them by free ranging. But if you are not free ranging, then you know, you're gonna wanna supplement with all their feed. And that's somewhere about uh, a third of a cup to a half a cup per bird. Now, whether or not to ferment your feed or to uh, make your own feed mixes, I do not recommend, especially for beginners, to do either one. Uh, you really need to know what you're getting into with mixing your own feed mixes. Uh, it tends to be just as much money as if you're buying uh, a bag of feed, in particular if you're going with organic anyway. Um, and plus you need to know exactly what minerals and, and whatnot to, to feed your birds, otherwise they could be mineral deficient. And uh, as far as uh, fermented feed, uh, you need to really know what you're getting into there because there is a loss of, thing, of vitamins, such as B vitamins, when you're doing fermented feed. I don't personally do fermented feed. Uh, some a lot of people like it and swear by it. Not my thing, but uh, for beginners, stick with actual chicken feed. So what breed of chicken should you get and should you get a rooster? I'll start with a rooster first. You do not need to have a rooster to have eggs. So if you are looking for chickens just for egg production, I'm going to advise new chicken owners to not get a rooster. Try to avoid getting a rooster. Um, and what you're going to want to look for on the signs whenever you, if you go into a feed store or if you're ordering from online or if you're going to a breeder is what's called pullets. Pullets mean female or hen. Um, if it says straight run, that means you're going to get a mix of both hens and roosters and you're gonna have to deal with uh, figuring out which ones are the roosters which will be apparent enough after a couple weeks and then you're gonna have to deal with those roosters you can't keep a bunch of roosters together they tend to fight a lot uh, we have one rooster to our 18 hens right now uh, really the ratio is about one rooster to about 10 to 12 hens um, but I'm pretty sure that in this batch that we got of pullets there's there's usually about a 10% chance that you're gonna end up with a rooster anyway so we'll probably end up with another rooster but i'm going to advise people to not get a rooster unless you really really want a rooster now as far as what breed there are endless people out there giving advice as to what breed i'm not going to give you advice as to what breed to get but i'm going to tell you how i approach picking out breeds and that is i go into a catalog like a hatchery catalog i'll pick out all the breeds that i like and then i go onto a site such as backyardchickens.com and i research about the bird how many eggs do they lay what color eggs do they lay are they a friendly breed are they cold tolerant uh are they heat tolerant and you know just based on my environment and what i'm using them for if they're good forages or foragers or whatnot and I sort it and narrow down my list to what breeds are going to work best for me. Now my favorites that I have are the Easter Eggers. They are the mutt of the chicken world. Um, they are just, uh, they come on many different colors. They lay multiple colored eggs. They're almost always super friendly. All the chickens that we got inside are all Easter Eggers except for two. Uh, Lari wanted two fuzzy footed ones. Those are two dark Brahmas that she picked out. So, but otherwise Easter Eggers, I love them. Uh, another one that's a really good breed is the Buffs. The Buffs, this little uh, orange colored one here, she's a really sweet bird. Um, and of course, I love my Cochins, and that's my rooster right there, blackberry and then blueberry, the smoky color one. They're very sweet hens. If I were to live in the city and I, ha uh, and I had an enclosed pen and I really wanted quiet chickens, I would go with Silkies every time. Silkies are probably my all-time favorite breed. They're not very good for free-ranging. 
Um, they have to be locked up. They would get hawked very easily um, or you know, injured. They, there's a lot of predator issues with, with silkies. They do need to be locked up. They can't get wet. They're kind of a higher maintenance chicken, but I love silkies. And I would keep those if I were living in a more suburban or city environment. And I might end up getting them here if I have a, a way of locking them up appropriately, but they won't free range. And the other thing along the lines with predators is if you are free ranging your birds, I would not recommend getting any white bird. Um, hawks tend to notice white very easily. Uh, it's the white birds that tend to get hawked very easily. I would avoid white birds if you are free ranging your chickens or if you have like an open um, run for your chickens. Something that somebody had mentioned that dark birds tend to look like crows. Crows and hawks are enemies. So if you have a darker colored bird on the ground, uh, you might have a better chance of not getting hawked just because uh, they look like crows running around. All right, so let's talk about a strange phenomenon that happened with this hen, who's not really a hen. Um, this is Magnolia, and she went through what is called spontaneous sex reversal. It's a very rare phenomenon that happens with chickens, uh, but you do need to be aware of it. I'm not gonna explain it in full detail. You can research it on your own, Google it, but basically uh, it's where a hen will basically morph into a rooster and she'll end up actually crowing and in very extreme cases uh, they actually have the ability to fertilize eggs and that's what happened to uh, our dorking hen right now she just went through this over the last couple months she is now uh part rooster but just something to be aware of if you are picking out all bullets you might end up with a rooster anyway so the next question that I get asked a lot is how many chickens should you get? Um, well, this really depends on how many eggs you eat per week and the breed of chicken and how many eggs they lay per week. Um, but for the average four person family, I'm gonna say start off and buy six chicks. If you start off with six chicks, you're probably gonna end up losing one to sickness or it might be a rooster or uh, it might have, it's, it's, there might be some sort of predator issue where you end up losing one, which means you're gonna end up with five chickens uh, at the end of six months, which is when they're going to start laying. And those five hens are probably going to lay about every other day, giving you somewhere around a dozen and a half eggs per week. Um, so for most families, about a dozen and a half is a good amount of eggs per week. If you need more, add more chickens. If you need less, mm, you know, you can go with as small of amount as, as I would say four chickens, but I would not recommend going anything less than four chickens. I would say six is a good amount to start with. Um, now we have, what do we have now like 30 some chickens now um, and the reason that we have 30 chickens is because we are now starting to sell our eggs to other people uh, other farms you might actually start seeing us locally in some stores and so that's a small business that we're just starting on the side it literally just happened this week so you might end up seeing that but unless you're in the um, egg business or selling eggs or if you have a large property six is the number i'm going to say start with for a family of four all right, so the next question is, where do you get chicks? Well, this time of year, spring, uh, you walk into any feed store, you're gonna find them everywhere. Uh, and that's probably going to be the best price that you can get them at. Uh, they're probably somewhere around $3 per chick. And you can bring these little guys home with you, uh, usually for a minimum of about four. You have to get at least four of them. Uh, another place to get them is online. Uh, we've ordered from places like My Pet Chicken, that's my favorite place online to order chickens. You will have to pay uh, for shipping, for overnight shipping, and you do have to pay a premium price online. Uh, they will charge, especially for the more uh, rare breeds of chickens, they, they tend to get quite expensive, like somewhere around $30, $40 per bird for a baby chick. And then finally, you can get them from a local breeder, and that's probably the best place to get chicks. If you have a reputable breeder near you, um, I would recommend getting your chickens through them. Um, now, one thing I'm going to say is I do not recommend that you get older birds. And the reason for that is because when you end up getting an older bird, it's usually, if someone's selling them, it's usually because there's something wrong with it. Usually they're not laying. Um, there's there's something where they have lice or some disease or something like that. You just don't know what you're getting if you buy an older bird. I always recommend starting with chicks. Also because you can train them yourself and hand raise them and they become more friendly if you, if you raise them from chicks. So hopefully this has helped answer some questions if you guys are starting to think about getting chickens. I personally love chickens. I highly recommend them. They are the easiest farm animal to keep and uh, they're great for bug control if you free range, obviously laying eggs. Uh, entertainment value alone is, is wonderful. Their antics are just crazy. Uh, but you just have to have the right situation. Um, 
you know, the one thing that I'm always going to recommend is that you look into any laws uh, surrounding keeping chickens on your property. Um, are you allowed to keep a rooster? Are you allowed to keep uh, chickens or pullets? How many can you keep? Do they have to be a certain distance from your neighbor? Uh, what about noise? You know, all that kind of stuff. Just make sure you look into all those things. Dot your I's, cross your T's before you go and get them. And uh, if you guys are still convinced that you want to get chickens after seeing this, I have uh, an entire video on the chicken starter guide as to what to do when you bring those chicks home. Absolutely everything you need to know for the first four weeks. And then I have an entire playlist for everything after those four weeks. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.